What's going on guys? So we're back again with another gameplay video. This time we have Trent here on the left playing Soul Striker with the SS2 Gohan package. And we have Byron here on the right playing Hatchiak. So just before they get started into the gameplay video, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Team Card Titan. So if you guys want any DBS seal products or DBS singles, make sure you check out that link in the description below. And for all the people in Australia and New Zealand, check out their auction page on Facebook as well. Now, Soul Striker, look, we know, excellent blue deck. Uh, having energy manip manipulation is always very, very powerful. Um, this package, I love. I love SS2 Gohan. Um, obviously, you can see Trent also loves SS2 Gohan, um, seeing as he's got the mat sitting just there as well. Um, but yes, this deck, really, really fun. Um, now, a disclaimer before we start into anything too serious. Um, Trent didn't realize it's the first time playing Soul Striker. Didn't realize on the backside that you do untap two energy. So Trent did decide to play on hard mode for this game. Um, he does only untap one. So before anyone kind of slams it down in the comments, unfortunately, he realized after, for the rest of the night, he was untapping two energy um, whenever he swung on the backside. But for this game that we have on recording, um, he was only untapping one. Still wanted to showcase it though because it is such a good deck and uh, we don't get to see Byron too often down in our locals and Hatch is such a cool deck as well. Um, has a really good game plan. Obviously, being able to play into that new SS4 Gogeta is very, very strong. Um, now, both decks, I guess, do very different things. So what Hatch wants to do is try to control the game, slow it down as much as possible, right? By stopping um, the opponent from being able to swing too many times. Good thing is with Trent's deck is he does have a 10 cost with triple strike that swings pretty much twice, right? And he can get it out by turn four. So he can put a lot of pressure into um, Byron, right? So he can do quite a lot of damage with just that one card potentially. Um, and he does build up such a big hand as well, being Soul Striker. You do get the draws quite often. Um, and then Byron's trying to control the game, slow it down, make it in his favor. So he can go into his SS4 Gogeta's, right? But we are going for the leader effect here. One, two, under, I think it's like underneath, one to drop, and then one to hand, if I remember correctly. I think it has to be a specific way. Um, so we are going to yeah, get our draw. We're going to swing in here with leader, just drawing a card, not untapping anything. He's comboing out, and we're going to play a Trunks, swing into the leader, and we are going to negate with Goku. Now, this deck, kind of, that's what it does, right? It's going to negate quite a bit. Um, just try to slow down the game in its favor. Once again, as I said, so it's a lot of negates. Um, he has charged his um, his Marseillan there. So kind of showing that potentially he has another one, right? Or Trent now has to think about that for the rest of the game, right? So it's kind of a bit of a scare tactic in his head as well, right? So knowing that that's there. Now, um, Byron going for, once again, the leader effect, knowing that we can't swing on the front just here. So he's just going to get his draws passively. Right, um, and then we can start swinging on the back side. And the good thing is we are a 20k as well, so probably not having to waste cards in hand. So he can start to build up quite a bit. Now, what he'll probably do here, I would say, is probably go for the effect of Boo. Doesn't look like he's going to. So I thought maybe he'd go for the effect of Boo, discard, draw two. Um, doesn't really need to too bad, I guess, at this point. Um, look, Hatch can be seen sometimes as a bit of a mill deck anyway, right? So you slow the opponent down enough. They can kind of mill out. So it looks like we are going to pay. <laughs> Wasn't that card? He was paying three for the unison just here, I was going to say. Um, go for the unison, right? And then what he can do is go his early awaken, which is great. Now, the good thing here is usually you would swing and you would untap two energy. As I said, disclaimer before we started, Trent didn't realize untap two. Obviously, we should, we should read our cards, but a lot of us just get in habit um, of remembering things and is thinking that's the way it goes, right? So... Um, what Trent did here was untap one rather than the two, so we would have had access to even more energy if he needed it. But we are just going to keep swinging in with 20. Good thing here as well, our Gogeta's got dual attack, right? Um, and we have burned the attack for this turn because he can't play anything that's over, uh, I believe it's energy cost of seven, if I remember correctly. Um, so he does, he's not stressing too much. But we are putting damage through right now, right? Forcing a lot into hatch, taking it down to four already. Good thing for Byron is now his super combo is alive, so he's probably comfortable going down to four. Um, quite a few cards in hand. As I said, he's got Boo in the drop area too, right? But next turn, the scary thing is, is now we can go into this Gohan just here, um, the 10 cost, and then what we can start doing is swing into the leader with 
triple strike. But as you can see, Byron does run. Max Power, Kamehameha. Very good card in this deck, right? So anyone that's playing really, really tall things, um, Max Power, Kamehameha, just get rid of it straight away, right? Because those things usually have like a dual attack clause or something like that, like your eight cost Bojacks. Um, and they're the things that are going to do a bit of the damage if those swings start to get through. But it is a 20k. Um, so what you can try to do here is potentially try to clear um, this trunks off the board, right? So that he can try to swing into it and clear the trunks off the board, potentially. So let's see what he decides. Or you start going for the unison, right? Because the leader can't take damage, right? Because we have a battle card in rest mode that is a Saiyan. So what we usually do is try to clear this this unison off the board if we can nice and early. Um, and then we go from there, right? So we got the 20k, why not swing into it? Um, and that having dual attack as well allows more attacks to go into the leader. And then being 20k's means they're going to either use two cards from hand or start wasting super combos, right? Which Trent would prefer probably anyway. Um, other thing is, of course, he would have access potentially to Nimbus Master to play out. Now, I probably would have kept that unison in hand unless he's got another one. Because I'm assuming what we'll probably do is play it out again. Or he may want to even replace it with like a boo or something like that. So let's see what he decides to do. Um, so what he can do, I believe, as long as he swings, I can't remember which way it works. I think as long as you swing with the lower one first, you can swing with the big boy after, right? So we are going to kind of play, put it back to hand. So pay the two energy, and then we're going to go for, so this is going to go for the four cost, and we do have to ramp our vanilla as well. Yep, so ramping our vanilla. Because uh, we're not playing like Zeno or anything like that. So going to our vanilla, um, we can swing. Now, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure the clause on Oceana says that it, only if it's played, um, it gets the mill effect, if I remember correctly. So I'm pretty sure we can counter play it back to hand and then it doesn't get um, the mill. So we can untap all that energy just here, which is pretty strong. So he's a 40k triple strike, which is really, really powerful. Um... And then what we can do is we can pretty much do the whole thing again, actually. So um, what we can do is we can minus on the Gogeta, play out another one, and then go into another um, Gohan, right? So is that potential? So pretty strong, pretty strong if we do that. So we are, again, a 40k. So we're going to have to combo out quite a bit unless we do have maybe an IAR in hand that we can combo out a little bit easier. Uh, it's 25, 30... 40, still need five more, unfortunately. So 45 just there. So again, using quite a few cards from hand, we do have um, a negate for the next swing though, which is good. Um, so unless Trent somehow establishes another um, 10 cost, I feel like we're in a pretty good situation just here, right? So we are going to combo out just there. We are now a 40k, so swinging into a leader. Again, as I said, Trent not realizing the untapped two. So he could have had his full energy just there. Um, so he could have had all five, right? Uh, and then he probably could have gone for the minus and then have an extra energy left up for de defense as well, right? So he could have played out vanilla on the minus and then go into another Gohan potentially, right? But what we're doing here now is we're going to swing with Eunice, and I'm assuming twice. Put some pressure through into the leader because now we are on uh, triple strike range as well. Um, scary thing is, of course, Trent can't shotgun his hand because we do have one energy up just here because there is that potential that we do have um, that Marseille that's sitting there in energy in our hand and we can just not take the damage. So you can't shotgun too hard against black if they are showing an energy up, right? It's always kind of scary. Um, unless you know they only run one and they've charged it, right? That's the only thing. So I'm not too sure how many Byron actually runs in this matchup, but we are going to combo out, taking it to 25, and then we are going to go for the effect of Gohan. So probably sacking the energy that's already tapped down. Interesting, okay, so going for the counterplay, bottom deck. I would have I would have thought that he would probably go for the energy that's already tapped, rather than the counterplay. Uh, and this one's just gonna straight eat and a gate as well. So um, that should be on the board. I'm not too sure why Byron put it in drop area. Should be on board because it is a body negate. Um, and that is allowed to hit the board. There's no tragedy 
or something like that, it would get under tragedy anyway because it's a one cost. But there's nothing on the board that would make it clear straight away. So that's fine. So he could have, he should have played that out onto the board just there. I think he probably just didn't realize. Um, so we are going to hit Tapion. Now, I don't think we can swing with Tapion now because we have swung with a two cost. I'm pretty sure that's the last thing we can do. But Trent here just want to be able to draw. So the good thing here, right? about this unison and the battle card that's in rest mode. Yeah, so just realize that he should have played that onto the board. Um, having this unison and this big 30k uh, in rest mode is quite strong. Obviously, only one swing to clear um, the unison off the board, right? So he can do that quite easily. Um, some people I have seen in Soul Striker running the Oceanus negate as well, because you do untap your two. That's two energy you need for Oceanus, and then you can kind of protect, I guess, what you've got on board quite easily, so there's always that potential, but it looks like what we're gonna do is just max power, get that off the board, so send it straight to the warp, right? Uh, now Trent has to establish a whole nother chain, right? Which isn't too hard in this matchup, okay? He can do that quite easily, but Byron doing the right thing, just unison clearing, you don't want that hanging around. The fact that it has dual attack is a 20K. Forces cards from your hand that you don't wanna be wasting, you know? So, um, now, leader can take damage as well, but we, I think Trent is still at 8 life, if I if you can see correctly. I believe he's still at 8 life, which is quite high. So, um, he's definitely going to have a task ahead, right, to try to do this. Now, Slug, I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, I think you can bottom deck cards from the deck to play it out, if I remember correctly. So, you bottom deck 3, I want to say. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen this card, and then I'm pretty sure what it does is you can uh, either send it to the drop or send it to the wharf or something like that, and you can clear a card off the board, or it may be on the actual play of the card. <laughs> so we are going to bottom deck our three just here. So Byron really going that control control route, right? Um, trying to keep, I guess, Trent from being able to get too many cards on the board that he can attack with. So yeah, I believe it's placed in the drop area. And then I think you send that card either to drop or to warp. I can't remember exactly, but it looks like to warp. Um, being a black deck, I would have assumed that probably would be going to the warp anyway. All right, so what we're going to do is now, very unfortunate we didn't have a Nimbus Master. Um, if I was Trent, probably wouldn't charge the Nimbus Master here just because I believe he does run the Vegeta Super Combos. Um, and if you start putting red energy down, uh, it is going to screw you over for your Super Combos, right? Because you do need to have all blue energy. So we are going to go for, it looks like, into the Bardock just here. Great dual attack card once again. So going to try to put some pressure in. Um, Byron having, again, it's, it's a deck with a lot of negates to try to slow down um, and maybe ha even having access. We've still got one energy, maybe having access to a Mars Saiyan. So let's see what he can do here. So swing in, taking the damage. I think, I think that's down to two now. If I can see correctly, I believe it's down to two. We are going to power burst, and then we're going to monkey. All right. So with a monkey, so we're going to negate. He did pay the energy. And then what we're going to do is do that. Uh, so we get a draw, and then our untap as well. So because um, it's on the attack, we hit the monkey, and then we get our untap, which is quite nice just there, right? So now we've got a triple striker as well. Um, Trent not being able to do that, I believe, because he's at a higher life total than four. Um, so couldn't super combo, unfortunately, just there. But it definitely can bean. Um, once again, only to untapping one, not realizing you can untap the two. Um, going for another Vegeta super combo. Once again, not at four from the look of it. I think he's got about six or seven still left in life. So no super combos going through. Um, I'm not too sure if. Maybe he is at one at this point, and that's why he's going so heavily into the attack. Potentially. Uh, so obviously they didn't realize that Trent wasn't down at four life to actually be able to start using those super combos just there, unfortunately. So it looks like we are going to swing in and have quite a high combo, and Byron's going to combo out. So we're going to treat it like the gameplay. We can't unfortunately change it from what it is. Um, so we are going to go for uh, super combos, two super combos, so we're trying to get out of this. Uh, I believe three super combos hit the board, 
just then. Um, so quite a few went behind it just there. So Byron does have to combo out quite a bit. Now I'm hoping he does have maybe like an IAR or something like that so that we can uh, just go straight up to 30 um, and then that makes it a lot comfier for him only using three cards. But maybe the IAR was that only one that got milled earlier on. I believe he does play two, I think. Not 100% though here. So 25, 35, 45, 55 and then an IAR, right? So that should definitely combo out of it just there. Um, so quite nice for him, obviously having that one energy. Uh, being able to combo up to straight up to 30 just there is very strong. I believe it's a 15 on that one as well, uh, which is quite strong. And then we're going to swing Monkey in for a triple strike, but he can't because he has already swung with the Bardock, unfortunately. Um, I believe that's the only attack he gets for that turn. So interestingly, he did decide to combo it up. I thought he probably would have kept it there on the board. Uh, I think Trent's down at two cards in hand. Um, so let's see what happens here, right? So I think Byron probably won't charge. Hopefully he has like a unison or something he can play out. Um, maybe draw one. Hopefully he finds something that will keep him a little bit safe. So I think we've got a unison. Plus one on it, draw a card. Only having one card in hand though. Um, obviously getting a draw off our leader as well. And I think the last card in hand is potentially the Oceanus. Um, but again, it's not... It's not really going to save him, I feel like, the Oceanus, because we have still got two swings on the board, and then we also have a little bit of hand as well to establish something else, like the Boo Unison I can see in hand just there. So we can see three Unisons in hand. Um, so what we probably do is we pay our four, get Boo, draw a card, right? It's probably no point really charging too much at this point. But uh, play Boo, draw a card, have another double tracker on board, and then what we can do is um, swing in with our guys, and then we can hopefully combo out into it. So we are going to power burst just here, grabbing back, I'm assuming, that Goku negate, so having a second negate. Pretty sure we should have a Goku in drop, but maybe not. Unfortunately, I think maybe Trent has bottom decked all of them, which sucks for um, Byron here. Unless we grab, I don't know if he runs like the Kai or something like that. But it looks like we're just going to grab. Yeah, you may as well grab at least a 5k combo, right? you got to hope for hope for something like that that you can combo out. We're going to pay 4. We're going to draw a card off the Boo. Um, and then we can swing in with Leader, drawing another card. Untapping our 2 energy so we have access to 4 again. And I'm pretty sure he's got another Boo in hand. But as I said... I keep thinking Trent's going to untap his two like he should be, but as he said, he only kept untapping the one rather than the two. Um, so if he did untap two, he would have had access to another boo. I think he's just realized um, that he should be untapping two energy <laughs> rather than just the one, right? So he's been untapping one the whole time. I think this is where, the point where he realized. Um, so we can combo in. Maybe someone said something on the sidelines to him that he should be. Um, so unfortunately, oh, looks like that's it for Byron, unfortunately. Um, so he had the Oceanus. I'm surprised he didn't throw that down, but at the same time, we probably could have still won, I think, having another boot in hand as well. Um, milling four at that point, or milling eight, or whatever it was that he needed, probably still could have got through. Uh, so there we go, guys. Uh, Soul Striker taking that one. The Gohan package, still really good. Um, obviously, it showed up, did its thing. Um, pretty good, I feel like, against this deck as well, because 10 costs with Triple Strike and Dual Attack is very, very strong. Um, Byron, unfortunately, wasn't able to, I guess, slow it down enough. But um, Hatch still doing what it wanted to do in a way, obviously being able to negate a lot. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any Gogeta's, but next time, I'm hoping we do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to subscribe, hit that bell to stay notified, and we'll catch you on the next one.